everybody and welcome back to my channel. So I don't know what day it is, <laughs> my schedule is a Friday but who knows if I've stuck to that this time. I have been doing a few sort of more bonus videos lately and I hope that you're enjoying them. Um, today's video is going to be using the Thirsty palette by Jeffree Star. This is one that I haven't really used a lot. It looks like this, you've got some nice kind of foiled glittery shadows, you've got a few brighter colours and then you've got this kind of warm tones. I believe this was released last year in the summertime, it's got a nice big mirror. I thought that I would just get some extra use out of it, maybe use a few more of the colours that I hadn't sort of tried yet on camera. Um, and also talk you through a few kind of bits and pieces that I wanted to discuss. Now some of these probably should have been dedicated videos and I do want to kind of preface this uh, chit chat style get ready with me by saying that I really hope that no one is offended by the thoughts and feelings that I share on these topics that are discussed. By no means have I um completely kind of covered every point and I do realize that this was kind of much more of an off the cuff video that I think maybe you guys would find interesting um I really hope that I haven't offended anyone with anything that I've said I have really tried to be kind of I've really tried to kind of educate myself on these things and I do feel like my general thoughts are not kind of polarizing either way although maybe some of you disagree with me um if you do then absolutely feel free to do so respectfully in the comments i am absolutely always up for a discussion um i do kind of i have said uh, before when i did my first video of the year that i really wanted to get into more kind of topical conversations about you know council culture feminism uh you know, things like that, uh, things of that nature that you guys might find more interesting because I am a grown woman, I'm much more confident in my thoughts and opinions, I'm much more interested in the things that are going on in society now and I'm also a little bit less afraid to share those thoughts and feelings with you and start a conversation that I feel like is important about things that I really care about or things that I don't feel are right that are going on. So, um, yeah, be prepared for that. We are going to cover a little bit of feminism um, and the Me Too movement today. So um, feel free to get involved in the conversation. Just remember this space is meant to be a calm, respectful place where we can all kind of join in an intellectual discussion of topics that we feel are important. And I will always try and put mine across in a respectful manner to you. And I would really appreciate it if you do the same to each other in the comments and to me also. So um, grab a cup of tea. I've got my standard um, tea mug with some cold coffee in it. And um, yeah, let's get to it. I know that he's a lizard, but... <laughs> um, and some of you will think that's really strange that I literally treat him like a child, but he's obviously stressing out in there, so I'm not going to have that. Um, he'll just be running up and down for the whole entire video and that'll be equally as irritating. So, here he is. You alright, mate? A bit better now. As you can see, he's got so big. I love him so much, it's not even funny. Standard cold coffee in a tea mug. I've heated this up only twice today. Um, so today I really don't know what I'm going to do, all I know is that I really want to use the Jeffree Star um, Thirsty palette, this is something that I did like a cut crease with before but I didn't, I don't know, like I didn't like how it turned out so I thought I'd use it again and maybe use some of the brighter colours um, and have a little bit of a chit chat while I do that I guess, I don't know. Are you guys enjoying the chit chat videos? I'm gonna get straight to it. I'll only show you one eye, I think. I don't know what I'm doing yet, just so you know. I don't know whether you're gonna see one eye completed or whether I'll do both, but you'll only see me do one. I have no idea. Um, so I'm gonna go in with Parched, this color first, just as my base all over. I've used the Pierre Louise base already. I think I'm then gonna take um, Stroke kind of into the crease area. This is quite a kind of warm, terracotta-y shade, I would say. So I thought today I'd do another kind of chit-chatty uh, get ready with me video. Um, because I had some nice feedback from my last one and you guys kind of made the point, and also I've had it kind of through DMs and things as well, um, that you were quite interested in having me talk about certain uh, topics 
um, as well as just like my beauty stuff. So I was thinking maybe we start a series where it is a chit chat, get ready with me. You've got a tutorial that you can kind of see. So I am using new products and things, but maybe we pick a topic uh, per one and discuss that while I do my makeup. Um, I was also considering starting a series where maybe um, you guys could send me questions if you have any kind of like relationship questions or you need advice on how to tackle certain things with friends or that kind of thing because I, I know a lot of you um, are kind of a slightly younger generation and I've kind of just come out of my teens and I'm now in my mid-twenties you know so I feel like I've kind of just come out of that stage of growing up and I feel like I also grew up an awful lot quicker because of my job and I feel like I want to kind of be like a big sister, you know? Um, I don't have sisters. I know that some of you that watch are um, guys and that's cool too. But I kind of, yeah, I don't know. I wanted to do a few more like topical things and maybe giving advice. I need to trim this guy's claws, man. You just want to run about behind me, Bubba. Because I know you're being, I know you're being really quiet, but you're a little bit, just worried this jumper isn't like grippy enough for you and you're going to fall off. Why don't you have a little run around behind, yeah? Good boy. Just so you know, I am aware that he's there. He's perfectly happy. He often has time on the bed, like do not panic. Also, if I see him doing anything that I don't like or I hear funny noises, then obviously he'll come back and sit with me. It's just easier. So today I thought that we would talk about feminism and how it has kind of uh, progressed and how I feel like it's a little bit of a dirty word now. Um, I'm gonna go in with, I think we're just gonna go like glitter all over the eye. I'm gonna go in with um, snatched and I'm just gonna press this with my finger all over the top lid. Um, yeah, I, honestly feel like it is one of those things where I consider myself to be a feminist. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Feminism to me is just simply believing in the equality of the sexes, equal opportunity for both. I think if you asked most people um, whether they believed in that with that phrasing, they would say yes. I do however feel that, and this is kind of common amongst certain people that I um you know spend a lot of time with guy wise and girl wise um that if you ask people whether they are feminists now it has become a little bit of a dirty word and I do kind of feel like that's a real shame because as I said the meaning of the word and what it stands for I feel like it's something that most people with a moral code would kind of agree with, right? I feel like this new wave of what I would consider to be, um, I guess, quite, do you mind? Um, quite militant feminism to be fairly unhelpful to the overall cause. Um, I feel like some of this is also kind of tied into the Me Too movement. Now, as someone that has had quite um, scary or jarring experiences where I have been like sexually harassed, I would say I have been um, followed, I've been groped, um, inappropriately touched like over my clothing in clubs and things. Um, you know, followed on a walk home. I've been pushed up against a wall by someone. I've had someone try to kiss me. Um, so I have had quite unpleasant experiences um, in my short lifetime with the opposite sex. But of course, let's also remember that um, men can do this to men and women can do it to men and vice versa. This is, this is not a gendered issue. Um, but and therefore I do kind of um, I do really absolutely realize the importance of speaking about these experiences and um, 
making people aware that these things happen and that they are not acceptable and setting really uh, kind of solid foundations for boundaries that are and aren't socially acceptable especially in places of the work you know especially in places such as the workplace um and all of that kind of stuff this uh kind of unhealthy uh you know sexual banter and you know that kind of stuff is is not appropriate or helpful you know the, the things that we see popping up about trump for example not acceptable however i do feel like this kind of new movement although it has been so so important like staggeringly important for those including myself who have experienced any kind of sexual harassment or anything like that or have been taken advantage of um, you know power play that kind of thing it is so important to talk about and although that has definitely kind of broken down some barriers i'm going to go in with this blue color uh submerge underneath the eye um, I do also feel like it has kind of opened a little bit of a floodgate for perhaps people that uh, maybe are not so sincere in their claims um, and also kind of started conversations that I feel don't need to be happening or are really kind of fairly obvious now some examples of these are um i'm gonna go in with my um phot photography uh technical liner by mac now and just pop that along the lash line uh the top lash line um you know there are now discussions not only about things that are really worthwhile but we are having you know there's a few there's been some debates online uh, that I've seen lately about whether catcalling should be made illegal or um, a hate crime. <laughs> Although I feel like talking about these things that have happened that are not acceptable and making people more aware of them has been really helpful. Um, it's also kind of opened a floodgate of uh, people just now being offended by everything <laughs> and it's really irritating me because it takes away from the real important issues you know if if we're discussing how i mean how can you compare someone yelling all right love <laughs> from from a car window or whatever at you to a hate crime now a hate crime is defined by um a group or single individual uh using you know verbally abusive language or violence against a minority group of people based on um gender sexuality or um or race that kind of thing that's a really really serious serious thing to be comparing someone yelling something possibly slightly offensive at you do you know what i mean i mean there's a there's a difference between someone going all right love you're looking fit today which is basically kind of what a cat call is and someone continuously um shouting at you down the street and making you feel incredibly uncomfortable and kind of blurring that boundary be between a quick whoa you're looking fit do you know what i mean um that is slightly different but the fact that we're having discussions on television about whether catcalling should be made a hate crime is utterly ridiculous to me and it is kind of demeaning the whole point of the movement by by discussing stupid things like that that quite clearly don't need to be discussed i mean it's also i feel making some of the men that i know quite uncomfortable that this kind of militant i'm offended feminism stuff is kind of going on because for the majority of people whether you're a man or a woman there is just a baseline of don't be a dick most people that i know as i've said both men and women because let's not forget that women can also be just as bad as men um most people 
if they make an inappropriate joke that they thought was okay at the time or they um, you know put your put a hand on a knee or um, say something that made you feel uncomfortable and you say something to them and their intention was not to do that because a lot of this to me has to do with intention there is just a general moral level of humanity where most people go oh my god I'm so sorry I really didn't mean to make you feel that way and never do it again and that I believe kind of is the people that make up the majority of the population so this kind of, this kind of terrifying oh we should make this a hate crime um, I'm offended because this sandwich has the word man in it. I don't feel like it helps our cause in any way. And if anything, it makes men, in my experience anyway, uncomfortable about getting involved in the movement or the conversation full stop for fear of saying the wrong thing, being offended, you know, offending someone or, you know, something of that nature. And I find that really um, disheartening as someone that is you know has very strong beliefs in equality of the sexes and would consider myself to be a feminist I do honestly feel like it is getting to be a dirty word and kind of attitude um, of such a branch of feminism which may still well be a you know a minority of people that consider themselves to be feminists but I do kind of feel like that small minority group because they are so loud of colour the whole infrastructure of the movement to a certain extent it's like um in the vegan community on youtube for example definitely uh has had and you know those that small minority that hound people um you know are abusive and all of that kind of stuff have really kind of colored that community and it's such such a shame because they have such an important message to share and yet people just on the basis of these few have you know gone about things in perhaps the wrong way it's kind of colored the whole movement and that is such a shame and I honestly really do feel like that's exactly what's happening. So yeah, I don't know. I really hope I haven't kind of offended anyone with, with what I'm saying about that. I mean, I, you know, I, me too and all of that kind of stuff absolutely has its place and has done a fantastic job starting these conversations. But I do kind of feel like it's definitely got to a point where that really takes away from the point of his existence to me. And it also makes me really upset because I feel like this kind of stuff really discourages people from getting involved. And that is just such a shame when it's such an important message. Something else that I would also like to cover, I'm just using my um, lipstick queen. Something else that I would also like to cover before I pop my mascara on, I'm using the um, Volume Vixen by Pure Cosmetics. I'm obsessed. Anyone wants to sponsor me, feel free because I would literally buy stocks in this shit. I really want to quickly discuss uh, the, the issue of assumed guilt uh, that we have in this country. It kind of links into almost cancel culture, I guess, but this is on a much, much more serious level. Um, I do kind of feel like we have a problem now because the Me Too movement has opened up this fantastic conversation and believe me, I'm trying to make it really clear to you this is something that I fully support because I really don't want to offend anyone who has had something horrific happen to them. So I may be saying this often but I really want to emphasise that to you because my issue is not with the movement, my issue is how the movement has perhaps been hijacked or other issues that come off of the back of the movement. Um, not the movement itself so I just really want to make that very clear not not only does it open up this conversation and allow people to come forward that perhaps were really scared to um, under previous circumstances and I honestly do think that's fantastic but what I do also want us to kind of consider is that as soon as someone claims that something has happened to them although it should be you should believe them and it should be investigated, there is also this kind of assumed guilt for the supposed perpetrator. 
and I do feel like there have been people that have been cleared. Um, there was this one specific case, I believe, in the UK where this young lad of, I think, only 22 or something. I'll try and link the This Morning video down below for you. His case was not properly investigated. Uh, a young woman claimed that he had raped her and it was later discovered that there were text messages that cleared him entirely of this and that she was lying. His name was announced before he was proven to be guilty or innocent and this is the kind of stigma that let's face it most of us so my camera really unhelpfully died there so we're back um so yes where were we the kind of assumed guilt of supposed perpetrators of sexual assault or things of that kind of nature i do really feel like given the nature of these kinds of allegations it absolutely makes sense to if people are found guilty, absolutely plaster their names all over the newspapers so that people are aware of these hideous things that they've done. I totally understand that. But when it comes to people such as the young man's case that I was talking about earlier, um, there are a couple of articles on this. I think the Times had written something about it, a few other kind of newspaper articles. Um, but for the ease of your understanding of this case, I'll try and link a uh, video segment where he was interviewed by Holly and Phil on this morning, just so that you can kind of get a very kind of quick understanding of it down below for you in the description box. His name was announced and then these texts came out that proved that he was not guilty and the girl who lied is still protected and he now has this stigma attached to him for the rest of his life. Because let's face it, as I was saying earlier, the majority of people will read something about someone, hold on to that information and not necessarily follow it up and see what actually happened. And this kind of assumed guilt culture, um, I feel like is quite unfair and unjust, especially when people are found to be innocent and I do feel like that's definitely an issue because just like if you murdered someone or you're a paedophile these kind of uh, allegations of a sexual nature are of course really hideous ones and that is something that I don't believe you will ever shake off that's going to be attached to this young man who's not even my age yet and I'm only 25 that's going to be attached to him for the rest of his life and I really do feel like that's unfair. So as a whole, I really do feel like this movement has been really helpful in opening up a conversation about things we should be talking about that are or not are, that are not acceptable in the workplace or any other place, especially where there is a position of power that's being abused, uh, whether you are a man or a woman. But I do kind of feel like it's also opened the floodgates for some other kind of behaviours that I don't feel are so helpful to the movement. We as the public should not be making assumptions without a court of law being involved where there is, um, you know, hard evidence for these allegations. And I do feel like, as I said before, the stigma attached to these people who are perhaps accused and then ac acquitted completely because someone else has lied or um, there's not enough evidence that is something that is definitely going to be attached to you for the rest of your life and I do kind of feel like that's such a shame that this movement has has almost uh, become a kind of public jury as well especially with things like social media being so prevalent now yeah I think it's a really complicated issue and I think it's a shame that this kind of stuff is happening surrounding such an important movement and I do also feel like with regards to feminism, as I had kind of mentioned earlier, that the word has almost been hijacked now. When I think of a feminist, even me as a woman myself who would consider themselves to be one, I kind of think of the militant feminist that is kind of overly offended, slightly man-hating and is probably absolutely terrifying even for me being a woman myself. And I think that is such a shame. Um, as I kind of referred to earlier, I feel like the veganism movement is such a powerful thing at the moment as well. But there are certain behaviours surrounding that through social media, you know, people using abusive language to try and get their point across. All of this kind of stuff is just completely the wrong way to go about it. And we should be encouraging and educating 
um, and encouraging a conversation about these things so that people understand the implications of their food choices or whatever it may be in order to educate and make change. Now, when you approach someone in a very aggressive, abusive, um, not particularly diplomatic fashion, what you do is you push them away. And I do feel like this is so kind of detrimental to the important conversations that we have started through movements such as these. And it's such a shame that it is kind of pushing people away or making them nervous to get involved with movements such as Me Too and feminism and all of that kind of stuff. Moving on, I'm gonna pop a little bit of this uh, Revlon gloss. This is in the color Nude Luster. I'm gonna pop a little bit of this on. And I think we will call it a day with the face. So I hope that you've enjoyed seeing me use the Jeffree Star Thirsty palette. I didn't use a huge amount of colours, but I did get to use some of the, I did get to use one of the brighter ones, some of the kind of more neutrally warm tones and one of the glitter shadows. And this is kind of the look that we came up with. I am really enjoying doing more of these kind of chit chatty where I apply makeup but also maybe give you a little bit more of my personality and thoughts and feelings about the stuff that's going on in our society currently. I do think these are really important conversations to have and I don't think I often have straight into this area or I never really have on my channel because I do feel like if you put a foot wrong nowadays it can be quite tricky to make people understand where you're coming from. Um, and I really do hope that you understand that my intention is not to offend anyone, but just to kind of educate and discuss the things that are important and that are going on in our society at the moment. I don't feel like there's enough discussion going on. And I did say at the start of the year with my first video of the year that I really wanted to not only continue with doing the kind of beauty stuff on here, but show you guys that I am a grown woman now. I'm a bit less afraid to share my opinions on things. And I would really like to be having more kind of interesting intellectual discussions with you guys. And I really hope that I am able to intelligently and cohesively explain my thoughts and opinions in quite a measured fashion. And I hope that you guys understand that I'm also open to you making some points if you disagree with something that I say, as long as it is done in a respectful manner. Like this channel, I really want to be a kind of discussion area where we also share a love of beauty, but I think it's really important to discuss what's going on in the world right now. And I think it's really interesting as well. And I'm hoping that my channel will maybe be a really respectful, open nice environment for you guys to do that so i will always be leaving the comments open and i really hope that you can get involved in the discussion if you're enjoying more kinds of these videos from me then please do let me know if you would like me to do a dedicated video to um why i think uh, feminism at the moment is problematic or the me too movement or perhaps some stuff on body image and um, what i think of the curve industry fat shaming, body positivity movement, all of that kind of stuff, then please do let me know down below because although I have covered a fairly broad-ish range of topics that I kind of do feel are all quite attached to each other today, that's certainly not all I have to say on the matter and I probably, because this was kind of an off-the-cuff video, haven't maybe explained myself brilliantly um, in places and probably have left a few points out that I should have made or would have liked to. So I really do hope that if you have experienced any of these things that I was talking about today, um, I know I have, um, then, then I really do hope that you haven't been offended. Um, and if you have, I apologise for this, but these are just my own thoughts and opinions. You absolutely don't have to agree with me. And I'm happy to listen to you respectfully, respectfully disagree with me in the comments also. So if you're enjoying these kinds of videos where they are more talkative and topical, as well as the tutorials, then please do give this video a thumbs up. Leave me any suggestions where you would like to see me cover certain topics if you have ones that you think are interesting or if there have been scandals on YouTube or anything. Um, the YouTube culture, there is the cancel culture at the moment going on that I have quite a lot of opinions about. Um, that might be interesting if you guys want to hear me cover that. 
and yeah please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it hit that subscribe button if you're not part of the janes family and don't forget to follow me on instagram it's hannah joe janes all lowercase you'll see much more of the reptiles i'm kind of doing a bit of a makeover on there at the moment so lots more beauty posts and things and i will see you in the next one okay love you lots bye